Yo, what's up guys? It's Bev from Artifact. Today, we are going to begin our journey into building a Spark AR clone filter from scratch. Yes, this is going to be a really creator, creative perspective development type tutorial where we're going to jump into Blender, we're going to jump into Spark AR, and we're going to merge the two a little bit and get our clone files in to Blender, then into Spark AR, and then you can make your own custom clone filter in Spark AR all manually. So this is this is much more on the creator side. If you don't want to learn how to do all this like really manually, hold on. In the future, we're going to make e really easy ways to do it. But if you want to jump in and, and get it now and start doing Spark AR so you can make Instagram filters of your own, this is how we're going to do it. I'm going to break down all of the little steps. This is going to be long form content, not really something short and sweet, right? OK, so let's jump into this. What do we need? You need Spark AR, right? So we need to download this program. You need a Facebook and an Instagram account to use this. It's uh, Metaspark. So it's sparkar.facebook.com. It's free. Just sign up, you download it, and now you have it. You also need Blender or a 3D modeling software, but the best one I know how to use is Blender. So we're going to use Blender. Download Blender. The newest version is fine. Whatever version it is it will work. And now we're good to go. So I'm going to open up Blender and we're going to start here. So this is the final product that we need to achieve the head without materials with everything set up properly and cleaned up so i'm going to build this with you right now from scratch and then we're going to import it into spark ar so i'm going to go file new and i'm not going to save it oh it's gone and we're going to build that together inside of this scene first thing we're going to do is hit the letter a hit the letter x and we're going to delete everything in this default scene and now we're going to start bringing our clone files in. Once you have your clone files from artifact.com downloaded, we're going to go file append and I'm going to go find my clone files. So go find wherever you have your clone files saved. Mine are saved right here. And we're going to grab everything that is relevant to a clone face filter. For me, I need the character's character. Everyone has a character's character. This is the head and the body. The following might be different. Mine is neutral, neutral. Yours might be angry or yours might be happy. Whatever it is, character, character is what we need. Go male for it doesn't matter the gender actually because the heads aren't different and then blender and then the blender file and then collection collection okay now you can see here I'm moving the scene around so I can get a better look by holding shift and middle clicking on the scroll wheel to make things move around so now I have a better perspective of the head and I have the head and the body in here so I'm just gonna go down the line of all of my clone traits that are related to the face so I know I need things like eyelashes just get that in here I know I need things like let's see halo I need the halo blender collection collection I need hair uh, oh did I get the lines already no I don't have lines lines are my eyebrows uh, collection collection uh, what else do I need here? I need a mouth. Let's get the mouth in here. Blender, mouth, blend. Collection, silly me. And I need a, hmm. Eyes, duh, we need eyes. So we'll get the eyes in here as well. So you're gonna do this for every single file until you have everything related to your head, right? Okay, so now hair. I think that's the last piece right there. Okay, hair is now added to the collection. I have everything. All right, if you want to be able to see in color, you hit the letter Z and you go down to material preview right here, boom. And it'll load up all the textures so you can see your character now. So I have my halo, my hair, my eyes, eyebrows, eyelashes, mouth inside the face. And we are good to go to the next step. From here, we are going to clean up the mesh and the objects and the whole scene a little bit. So I'm going to move my mouse over here to the right side of the screen. You see how it's on this divider? We're going to grab this divider and pull it down so I have a better look at my scene collection here. And... For my first thing in this portion, we're going to hit the letter A inside of this area. So I'm going to make sure I'm in this area, hit the letter A. I'm going to right click. I'm going to go down to parent and I'm going to go clear and keep transformation. This button here 
We'll make this go all crazy, but we want that because it's unlinking all of the objects from the bones, the armature, because we don't need the bones for this case scenario. So now in the top right of my screen, all of these white boxes, they got to go. All of them gone. So the easiest way to do this is you click on the first top white box where it says collection and we're going to hit the letter X and then we're going to click on collection, hit the letter X and click and X and click and X and click and X over and over and over. So everything's gone. Now there's no white boxes. Now we only are going to keep the triangles. And this is what I mean by triangles. These little orange triangles here, this is the only thing we want. So this is not a little orange triangle. This is not a little orange triangle. We're going to get rid of all of them. Easiest way to do that is click the top one, hold the shift key, click the bottom one because all of these don't have an orange triangle in them. So we're good to hit X and delete it. Now I'm going to click the top one here, click the bottom one here because we're going to get rid of all of these as well. There's no orange triangles here, gone, right? Now I only have orange triangles left. This is what I need to have remaining. From here, what else don't I need for a filter? I don't need a body. So I'm going to click on the body and delete it with the letter X. And I also don't need eye shine. It's this little clear, transparent shine gloss in front of your eyeballs that really doesn't do too much. So I'm going to delete it because we need to save space. We need to optimize the clone filter so it can even work. Right. So from here now, you should have something similar to this where you only have really the required files uh, remaining that would really dramatically change your appearance if you got rid of it. So now we're going to cut the meshes up a little bit. This is not as hard or as scary as you might think. I'm going to show you exactly how we're going to do this from here. I'm going to middle click the mouse wheel, move my camera over a little bit, click on this head model, go into edit mode, zoom in a little bit by scrolling. And I'm going to grab this bottom loop section right here by holding the alt key and left clicking. And you see here what it did is it selected the entire loop underneath here. Now, if you have a number pad, lucky you, because you can do control, hold control and the plus key. And that is going to keep selecting loops over and over and over up your clone's body. And the minus key is how you deselect if you selected too many. If you don't have a number pad, you can't do this. The way you would do it is you go select, select more or less and go more or less. And that is the fastest way to do it over and over until you get all the way to the top, right? Now, from here, you can hit the letter X and hit delete vertices. So it's gone. Now we only have the head remaining. And if I switch back into object mode or hit tab, tab is the shortcut to do that. We don't have a neck anymore. We only have the head, which is what we want for a clone filter. Now from here, what we need to do is separate the eyes. Okay. We have right now your eyes are in a pair. So if I move this around, you can see they're one object, but spark AR needs you to have two eyes because you have two eyes. So it needs to track two objects, not one. So the way we do that, is I am going to go back into edit mode with the eyes selected, okay? The eyes are selected, go to edit mode. I'm gonna grab a singular dot. It doesn't matter which dot, pick a dot, any dot. And then we're going to go up into select up here and go select linked, linked, boom. And if you wanna see what that just did, I'm gonna hit the letter Z and go to wireframe. And you can see through the objects now, we can visually see through the object now that it selected every single vertice of that eye that's connected linked in the area, right? So all of the eye has now been selected, but it didn't select the other eye because the other eye is not connected. But this is what we want. This right here is exactly what we want. And going to wireframe and looking at it is completely optional. From here, we're going to hit the letter P and choose selection. Boom. Right. And now I'm going to switch back into object mode. And what just happened here is we separated one eye from the other eye. Now they're two separate eyes. Oh, that's the head. Eye, eye. And you can see that up here. We have clone eyes and clone eyes 001. Now from here, I'm going to do a little bit of organization. I'm going to go up where it says clone eyes. And I'm just going to call this I, um, no caps, please. I, I'll just call this I left. And then we'll go to the other eye and go I right. And the names here don't matter. It's whatever you want to call them. So I'm going head, um, mouth. Um, let's go halo. Let's go eyebrows. Let's go eyelashes. 
and here, boom. So now everything in my scene is all named something that makes sense to me where I can remember what they are. From here, we need to, we need to actually save a little bit more space with a little trick. So I'm gonna show you this. If I click on the head and then we go to UV editing and then I click on this little button up here at the top, it says browse image to be linked. I'm gonna look for the human M light skin. This is the skin that came with my clone's head. Yours might be something else or yours might be exactly this. It's the one that's like human something, something, something. Um, that is uh, the skin of your clone. If you don't know, that's what it looks like right there. Um, you, if you if you are wondering why we didn't choose DNA, don't worry about it. The DNA part comes in Spark AR. You don't need to do that here. This is this is what we're doing here. So at this point here, what we can do to save a ton of space is I'm gonna zoom into my character over here on the right. I'm gonna switch it to object mode. I'm gonna click on the eyebrows and the eyelashes, or I got that backwards, but you know what I mean. The eyebrows and eyelashes. And I'm going to hit tab or go to edit mode and hit the letter A. And you can see it's overlapping the face here because I selected the face. So it's overlapping the face, but it's not part of this image. It actually has its own image, right? And in fact, I'm going to show you that in shading right now because we're going to have to do this in the next step anyway. So in shading tab, if I go and I click on my eye lashes, you can see it has a material here, right here where my mouse is called M neutral eyelashes. And if I click on the eyebrows, it also has one called M lines matte. That's two whole materials and all of their connected material parts, we'll call them, that are taking up space inside of your project that are, aren't really doing anything but being a shade of black, right? So what we can do instead is we can link these to the head instead, right? So if I click on the eyebrows, like I have selected right now, I see the materials M lines matte. I'll check the slots. There's only one slot. Perfect. Check the material and select head instead. And then you're going to be like, oh, it's all wonky. That's okay. We're going to fix that. And then we're going to go to the eye lashes and check the slot. There's only one slot and then go into head. So now the eye lashes and eye brows are both using the head material. So we just got rid of two materials that don't need to be used that are just taking up space, okay? So now if I go back to UV editing, you can see how they're overlapping on the face. That's what's happening over here. So I'm gonna get a better view for you. And I'm gonna move this bar here by just scrolling. And I'm gonna hide everything so you can visually see what I'm talking about, okay? You can visually see it. That's this. If I move these around by hitting G, you can see it's using the head texture now. But to make it just black, all we got to do is hit the letter S and make it really, 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 really small, really small. Okay. Make it something like that. And then just make maybe smaller and then just put it into this little area right here. Just zoom in some more and make it even smaller and just kind of put it in this gray area here, all right? You could use the corners, but I find the corners are glossy. You kind of see this, like it's a little glossy, right? But if I put it inside by the eye, it uses this material close to the eye. And it's a little more natural, more hair-like, I guess you would say for this example, right? So I think that spot is a decent spot to get more consistent look with your avatar, right? That looks good. And you've just saved two materials. So you optimized a bunch of space by just using just this little patchy area right here. And you're kind of triple dipping with the same material, which is a good thing, right? Better value for, for space, right? Very, very optimal. So now we'll go back to layout. Your eyebrows, eyelashes, and head are now using just the head material. You got rid of the neck and everything else is good. That's that's really it. That's really it. Because the, the, the hair and the halo can't use the head material. It's not, it's, it's not included, you know what I mean? So from here, the last step in getting your files ready is we are gonna hit the letter A. So everything is selected. And we are going to go and right click on the screen, go to set origin and go origin to geometry. Boom. Now you see all these little dots going around your clone's head. This is what you want because you want the origin of the object to be of the geometry and all that. Okay. What all that really means is that the center point of your object is the center of the object before, before this step, before right click set origin geometry it is actually using the center of the world. So if I rotate, for example, by holding, clicking R, it's actually rotating around the world, which is not what we want. We want it to actually rotate around itself, 
like this, the center of itself. So from here, we are going to go and hit A, right click, set origin, origin to geometry, zoom out a little bit, and we're just gonna place the head somewhere in the center of the screen. So I'm gonna hit the letter G, hit the letter Z, and then pull it down here. So somewhere around here is fine. You can, you can, we're gonna adjust it in Spark AR anyway, so we just kind of want it in this general area close to the zero. You can even move it back a little bit if you want to. Just kind of get it close to the center of the screen because this is where it's gonna pop up. So if we left it way up in the sky like that, when you put it in Spark AR, it's gonna be way up in the sky. So this just helps you find it a little bit easier when we pull it into Spark AR. So from here, what we're gonna do is we're gonna right click, set origin to, actually right click, sorry, right click, don't right click. What am I talking about? Object. I'm, I'm looking at the word object and I'm saying right click. We're gonna go up to object and we're going to go apply and we're gonna go all transforms. This is the one we want, I think. Let me see the result. Yeah, that's exactly what we want. So we want all transforms. So now it's gonna be all back to the center and zeroed out correctly down here at this zero point, okay? And then the last step is we're gonna click on the left eye, hold shift, click on the right eye. So you can see here, just to double confirm what's going on, I have the eye left and eye right selected and we're going to right click set origin, origin to geometry, just the eyes. Everything else is fine being zeroed out to the center of the screen like I just showed you. Right? Only the eyes should be on origin to geometry now because we specifically need the eyes to rotate properly when we look around for eye tracking purposes, right? Okay, at this point here, we need to strip all the materials from the scene and you are done. So what are we gonna do to do that? We're gonna go into shading. We are going to go and get my character kind of in the screen somehow. And we're, click, we're gonna go, just click on everything. So click on the halo, get rid of the materials. Just hit the X, delete it. Check the slots, make sure there's nothing hidden here. Click on the hair, delete it. Nothing in the slots. Head, delete it. Something is in the slots, get rid of that. Okay, um, the eye left. Okay, one more quick tip. The eyes are exactly the same. You don't need two eye materials. So eye here and eye here. We, it, you see how it says eye left? If I go slot, there's eye right. Get, just get rid, of, get rid of all of it. That's the easiest way. Just get rid of everything. That's a material. So every single thing in here should be white and blank and just no materials at all inside your scene, okay? Oops, that's an accident. So nothing in my scene has material, everything is empty. That is what we want, okay? Because Spark AR does not deal well with materials. It'll break Spark AR sometimes. Sometimes it will work, sometimes it won't work. It's not consistent. The easiest way is we build the materials there and then we also have better control of what's going on. So we're gonna strip all the materials. So it's just a blank canvas, essentially. And now we are at the point that I said earlier that we wanted to build. This is it. It is pretty much ready for Spark AR purposes. So from here, we can just hit the letter A and then hit file and go export GLTF. And inside of these options here, if you have other things in the scene or you wanna export everything individually, you'd use this option, selected objects, but it should be good by default. I'm just flashing through so you can see in case yours is not on default anymore. And we'll just save it as something, Spark AR Clone 1 GLB and export as GLTF. Okay, from here, I'm gonna hop into Spark AR really quickly and show you what we just made. So I have this file, I'll just pull this right here. You see that Spark AR Clone 1, we just made that, right? And if I just drag and drop this into the scene, it go, it'll go somewhere center like this. And you can see here, I have the clone just kind of floating here in the middle of the scene, right? So we're gonna do Spark AR. Um, we're gonna hop into Spark AR right after this, this video, but this is just to show you really quickly how easy it is. And now that the clone is all set up, it's an easy drag and drop and it's in your scene. It is good to go. If yours doesn't it look like this, something went wrong, it should look all together in one piece when you drop it into the scene. Okay, so that's it for this one. In the next one, we're gonna do the Spark AR portion and blend shapes and talk about how all those interact and then kind of merging from Blender into Spark AR and building your filter.